Hello everyone and welcome to Sky Scholar. Today let's return to Kirchhoff's law, focusing on its conflicts with the laws of thermodynamics. Previously we discussed Kirchhoff's law in this video. Kirchhoff's law states that in thermal equilibrium, the radiation contained within a cavity must always be black or normal and independent of the nature of the walls. This affects all thermal processes and is used to justify the universal nature of the laws of thermal emission, gaseous stars, and a great portion of modern cosmology. It even touches on my own field of magnetic resonance imaging, and that is why it cannot be permitted to stand if it is untrue. In order to gain more insight into the validity of Kirchhoff's law, let's use a thought experiment previously presented in this paper. Imagine a sealed box with a removable wall in a helium bath at 4 Kelvin. The box is made of a graphite-like material, but unlike graphite has no energy in its electronic conduction bands. The walls are perfectly absorbing with an emissivity of 1. Vibrations of the atoms in its walls are responsible for thermal conduction and for producing the radiation field though no energy remains in the walls. Using this idealized material, all the energy which defines the 4 Kelvin temperature is converted to the radiation field, just like Max Planck considered in his classic text on the theory of heat radiation. On the floor of this larger box, we place a second cavity with one wall initially opened. The walls of this perfectly reflecting cavity are made from an idealized metal similar to silver, except that 100% of the energy defining the temperature is trapped within the electronic conduction bands. The material can't emit photons because it will always place the energy in these readily available bands. Both boxes are under vacuum, but can transfer heat through thermal conduction from atomic vibrations. For the perfect absorber, that energy is immediately transferred into the radiation field. In the perfect reflector, the energy is immediately transferred into the conduction bands. Initially, both boxes contain black body radiation at 4 Kelvin, since they are in thermal equilibrium with the helium bath and since the large box has an emissivity of 1. Now we close the wall of the small cavity and remove the two boxes from the helium bath, allowing them to come to room temperature. When this happens, the large cavity will be filled with black body radiation at 300 Kelvin. The small cavity will also reach the same temperature through thermal conduction of its walls. Immediately, we see that Kirchhoff's law is invalid for the closed system made of the inner box. In this situation, the small box will still be filled with black body radiation at 4 Kelvin, despite the fact that the cavity itself is now in thermal equilibrium at 300 Kelvin. Since the perfectly reflecting walls trap energy in the conduction bands, they can't emit photons. Therefore, not all cavities contain black body radiation at their temperature, and Kirchhoff's law is proven false. Max Planck tries to get around this in his textbook by stating that the perfectly reflecting cavity is not yet in thermal equilibrium, but could get there by inserting a small carbon particle. The claim is false. Thermal equilibrium has been established through conduction, which Planck has ignored. However, Planck also maintains that the carbon particle can act as a catalyst, and though it contains no energy of its own, can still act to fill the small cavity with the appropriate black radiation, which in this case corresponds to 300 Kelvin. But as a catalyst, the particle cannot introduce or dissipate energy, only lower the activation energy required to enable a process which was destined to take place even in its absence. Its only role is in converting any existing radiation into the desired radiation at 300 Kelvin. Planck does not convert energy from one form to another with his carbon particle, and that is why he believes that it is only acting as a catalyst. Let's consider this situation carefully by first removing the small box from the large cavity and surrounding it and the carbon particle with a rigid adiabatic wall so that no new particles, heat, light, or work can enter the system from the outside. Under those conditions, we suspend our carbon particle at the center of the cavity and do not allow it to touch any of the walls. Then the carbon particle, if acting as a catalyst, could only convert photons already contained in the radiation field to a new distribution. Max Planck argued that the existing radiation would be converted to a new radiation field at the correct temperature. 
However, there would not be nearly enough photons inside the cavity to generate the radiative power given by Stefan's law at 300 Kelvin. To argue otherwise is a violation of the first law of thermodynamics. It is clear that without access to the energy in the walls, the carbon particle cannot fill the cavity with black radiation at the correct temperature. If we allowed the carbon particle to touch the wall and fill the cavity with black radiation at 300 K, it would have to do work as it converted energy from the conduction band into the radiation field. The carbon particle would no longer be a catalyst as the conversion of energy from one form to another always involves work. However, such work in this case is forbidden by the second law since we do not have surroundings which could act as a heat sink. The cavity remains devoid of 300 Kelvin radiation and Kirchhoff's law is again proven false. Now if we remove the adiabatic wall and place the heat source under the cavity, then it could become filled with black body radiation at 320 Kelvin for instance. This is achieved through the action of the carbon particle and the loss of heat by the other sides of the cavity into the surroundings through convection. However, for this closed system, we will still have a problem. The cavity now becomes filled with black radiation, but the perfectly reflecting walls still contain energy initially associated with the temperature of this system. As such, this closed system cannot be considered to be in thermal equilibrium. We cannot fill the perfectly reflecting cavity with radiation and insist that thermal equilibrium is maintained without violating the zeroth law when energy can remain trapped in the conduction bands. We now have a non-equilibrium system. I hope that you enjoyed this video demonstrating that Kirchhoff's law can easily be proven to stand in violation of the laws of thermodynamics. If you did, please leave a like. In addition, Subscribe if you want to journey with me through space here at Sky Scholar. Comments are always welcome down below and I'll see you soon on our next video.